Okay, so the chapter is called bowel elimination and care. So bowel elimination means when we eat something like food, after digestion, the good element from the food is reabsorbed. And finally, reabsorption occur in the small intestine. When food is go through the large intestine, water also reabsorbed. The end product of food is called waste materials. Waste materials is eliminate from the GIT tract. And this is called bowel elimination, right? Also, same way when urine eliminate from the body, and this is called urine elimination, right? Before to go this chapter, there are some terminology we have to know related to the bowel. The first terminology here, the defini uh, defecation, what is defecation? What is constipation? What is diarrhea? And also, what are the fecal incontinence? And also, what is the flatus? After finish all of this, if we have time, we will talk about the urine elimination as well. Right? So, the defi means the process of bowel elimination or the stool out from the body, stool expelled from the body is called defecation, constipation. So if your GI does not pace peristalsis well, does not move well, then constipation developed, right? So definitely, if anybody has to develop the constipation, like hard stool, difficulty to passing stool, if your patient have the constipation, you have to tell some, uh, you have to educate them what you should tell them, right? So you should tell them increase fluid intake, like two, two, from two liter to three liter fluid per day. Increase the fiber intake, like 25 to 30 gram per day fiber. Also increase the activities, like exercise, movement, ambulation, or increase the activity which stimulate the peristalsis. Also, do not use the laxative as long term, which can cause chronic constipation. So like if anybody has a constipation and they go Walmart and buy some laxatives because it's the over-the-counter medication you can buy. But if you use the laxative for a long time, it can cause chronic constipation, right? So another point, it is called diarrhea. So what is diarrhea? Diarrhea means excessive or several fluid, right? Several liquid stool out per day. So diarrhea can cause dehydration because fluid loss or fluid and electrolyte imbalance. If the vomiting or diarrhea is too much, they lead to fluid and electrolyte imbalance, including metabolic acidosis, skin breakdown, skin breakdown around the anus. And Clegg's board sometimes asks if any question come about the diarrhea or vomiting, what are the sign of dehydration? Because diarrhea and vomiting can cause 
dehydration, right? So the symptom of dehydration increase the pulse rate, increase and causes hypotension, poor skin trigger, or elevate the temperature and also dry mucous membrane. In every class, I explain what are the sign and symptom of dehydration. And also, if patient has a diarrhea or dehydration, you have to apply the moisture barrier around the anus, especially the diarrhea patient. Now, going to talk about the incontinence. Incontinence means you do not have control in your fecal materials output or urine. Incontinence when causes the urine called urine incontinence. When incontinence occurs in the fecal, it's called fecal incontinence, right? So the incontinence is several type, like trace incontinence or arch incontinence. So fecal incontinence basically loss of voluntary control of the rectal sphincter. So if you have any emergency for defecation, but there are no facilities or toilet, what you do, you have to control your sphincter. But if you lose the control in the sphincter, this is the problem start. And this is called incontinence. Sometimes incontinence cause because of the trace. Small, I mean, urine or fecal loss with abdominal pressure for like sneezing, coughing, or laughing. The other incontinence is called arch incontinence, usually inability to reach the bathroom in time due to the overactive detroxal muscle, especially urine incontinence. But it is important if your patient have a incontinence, whatever, fecal or urinary, you have to educate your patient. Patient teaching is important because you are RN what you have to teach them. You tell them or maintenance the toilet schedule. Also tell or do some special type of exercise. It's called Kegel exercise. Reduce the caffeine intake, reduce alcohol intake also White reduce program for trace incontinence if anybody is overweight, right? So as I told you, uh, basic terminology we have to know about the in uh, bowel elimination. Last one is called platus, means gas. So sometimes when patient complain to you the constipation, you have to find it out. Patient has a simple constipation or absolute constipation. Absolute constipation means you have to ask, okay, I understand you have a constipation, but do you have any flatus passing through the anus? If they say no, means they have a absolute constipation. If they say yes, gas passing means they have a simple constipation. It is important when you do this practice, you have to know. The peristalsis. So when we eat something, food is passing from mouth to esophagus, from esophagus to stomach, and stomach to the as part of duodenum and small and last gut. How food is moved forward because of 
peristalsis movement because of peristalsis movement right this movement consists of rhythmic wave like movement beginning from esophagus and continue to rectum so involve the contraction of circular and longitudinal muscle so our gi or gastrointestinal system contain two type of muscle one is circular other is longitudinal so peristalsis movement is occur because of the movement of both circular or longitudinal also propels the bowels of food through gi tract what next so they said the process of digestion absorption and metabolism of nutrient so what do we eat like chicken legs chicken legs should be break down in small pieces after the small pieces chicken is leg is a protein when digestion protein is go down to make amino acid amino acid is the smallest molecule reabsorb through the blood and go enter the liver for metabolism and after the metabolism the amino acid make the energy as a atp and waste product go through the last gut and rectum so the bowel elimination occur after nutrient are moved through gastrointestinal tract in the stomach there are so many enzymes like gastric juice hydrochloric acid they break down the food into small molecule and converting it to chyme liquid the chyme passes through the pylorus of the stomach or especially pylorus sphincter into the small intestine where the nutrient are reabsorbed in the blood for cellular respiration cellular metabolism in the remaining time passing through the ileocecal bowel into large intestine and then to passes as a stool through rectum so the normal stool is a soft normal faces character soft formed light yellow is brown right also slightly s curve shape the baby who is breast feed their stool is bright yellow or the baby who drink the formula or cow's milk they are darker yellowish and no goes get go uh, next not serious color change in the fecus in the feces so basically what we have to know for board exam i'm going to explain some stool are greenish or black if the blood is mixed in the stool is called terry color stool some are reddish bit or iron supplement if you take iron supplement your stool should be black color but is non terry no odor enter seed or barium sometimes causes the stool whitish so abnormal content of the stool so liquid sometime watery 
or uncombed or hard or dry. Bright red blood sometimes came in the stool or black coffee ground appearance or pale white or clay like, mad like. The presence of pus or, or mucus in the stool, it means the fat mixture in the stool. Fat does not digest well, steatoria. Presence of some worm or eggs, protozoa. Also, foul odor, bloody, metallic smell is the abnormal of stool. So there are some questions we left here. When you have free time, you can read. And now go for teatoria, some more terminology related for the uh, NCLEX board exam. Teatoria means when stool mix with the fat, undigest fat, and stool is look like the soap uh, water um, mixture stool that contain abnormal amount of undigest fat indicate malabsorption of fat is called teatoria. Sometimes the stool contain the blood is called frank blood. Bright red blood in the stool may cause the hemorrhoid or piles intestinal bleeding or hemorrhoids. But if your stool contain red blood, red blood, it indicate the blood is coming, the terminal part of gastrointestinal tract, maybe from rectum, maybe from anus, or terminal part of last gut. But if the stool contain dark, or blackish blood indicate the blood is coming from small intestine, right? If the blood is mixed in the stool or hidden blood in the stool is called occult blood. And Clex Bush sometimes asks this one is called fico occult blood test. So fico occult blood test we do test for blood in the stool. So if your patient has to go for occult blood test or fico occult blood test, you has to educate them. You has to teach them about the, you has to tell, collect the three sample from the three different bowel movement and do not allow the contamination with water or urine. Also for point of care testing, blue color indicate the positive result. Blue color indicate the positive result, means blood present in the stool. The test we have to do for blood in the stool is called uh, GUIC test. Go next here. Common alteration of the bowel elimination, like constipation. This is the abnormal, right? Constipation or diarrhea, too much loose water is stored or sometimes it is too tight or too hard, it's called impact stool or fecal incontinence. All are abnormal. Patient do not know how to control it. Fecal incontinence. And here showing the factor affecting the bowel elimination. What are the factor affecting? One is called changing the activities levels. If you do not activate 
do not exercise, do not work, your bowel habit will be changed or change the dietary intake. So if you take too much meat, no fiber, no vegetables, you, you develop the constipation. If you change, do not drink enough fluid, develop constipation, abnormal bowel, change the fluid volume intake, side effect of medication. So some of the medication can cause the constipation like calcium channel blocker. Side effect of some surgical operation, the GI. Also, the pregnancy can cause the constipation because of pressure. And here the high stress level or emotional problem sometimes causes diarrhea, sometimes causes the constipation. Luxative areas. So if anybody has to take the luxative for a long time, they cause they develop the constipation, right? Aging process. When people is going older, their GI does not move or peristalsis is reduced and they develop the constipation. So aging process also alter the bowel habit. Structural change, chemical change, or some kind of food also causes or influencing the bowel elimination. Now here, what are our intervention to promote the bowel elimination. We have to educate the patient or tell your patient, increase the physical activities. So after the major surgical operation, as prescription, after few hours, we assist the patient for to movement, ambulating ensure adequate food intake up to 2,000 milliliter to 3,000 milliliter or two liter to three liter per day. Increase the fiber intake at least 20 to 30 gram per day. Provide the privacy in the hospital, right? Privacy. Position the patient upright for elimination. Also provide the stimulant that flow the bowel function at the home, right? Such as a cup of hot coffee before breakfast. Some people feel it. So here, another occult blood test we sometimes do to find out the patient have any kind of hidden uh, blood passing or not. Test for presence of blood in the stool is called FICO or FICO occult blood test. Culture and sensitivity. So culture and sensitivity we do to identify what are the microorganism present in the stool then we can choose the appropriate <laughs> antibiotic. So then we have to show uh, appropriate antibiotic, I said. Culture and sensitivity we do, and also we test to find out any kind of ova or parasite. So test for presence of parasite, worm, or their eggs. Now go next. So assessment parameter for bowel elimination. One is called, we have to ask or find out what are the- Sir, I'm not, I'm not seeing the page. So what are the assessment parameter when you take the history of bowel elimination from the patient, we have to find out the frequency, means 
how many times they go to the toilet for bowel elimination, right? Frequency. What are the color of the bowel? What are the color of the stool? What are the amount? Is it too much or not at all? Consistency. Is it watery like diarrhea or it is too hard, constipation? Or unusual shape and size or very offensive water? Right? So then we have to go, um, what are the medication for uh, diarrhea? What are the medication for diarrhea? So diarrhea may coat it of the mucous membrane of the bowel or inhibit the peristalsis or treat the disease or infectious process causing the diarrhea, right? So as I told you, the diarrhea patient, the most common complication is the dehydration, what we have to know. Constipation may occur directly to stimulate the peristalsis or softening of stool or adding the bulk of the food or the bulk of the stool. And now next here, the health condition and situation related to diarrhea. So bacteria or opportunistic infection, like patient has a uh, HIV. So if a patient has a diarrhea, like a patient took the antibiotic, like moxiclub for 10 days, moxiclub antibiotic can cause the diarrhea and this is called opportunistic infection. So it is called side effect, but sometimes the diarrhea develop because of the other disease. Taking the steroid or anti-inflammatory drugs for arthritis can cause diarrhea. Indigestion required the frequent intake of antacid, which contain the magnesium can cause diarrhea. Lactose intolerance cause diarrhea. Some kind of food can cause diarrhea. High stress level emotional problem is buried. Some of the disease like diverticulitis or gastroenteritis, both can cause diarrhea. And here the health condition and situation related to constipation. In what medical condition can cause the constipation, like I said, if movement or physical activity less, patient start to develop the constipation, inadequate fiber intake, inadequate food intake, taking antacid with aluminum or calcium causes constipation. Iron supplement causes constipation some kind of morphine, pethidine, meperidine, means narcotic, addictive medication cause constipation. Pregnancy causes constipation for a time being. Depression cause constipation because they do not eat well. Laxative abuse for a long time causes constipation and also aging patient. Right. So, what are the uh, if your patient has a constipation, especially older patient, we has to give them some enema, right? So, when you give them some enema, it is very important as an RN. We has to know the administering how to admin the enema, right? Before to go, the enema administration, we have to know what are the different type of enema. 
right? And also there are different passes. One type of enema is called cleaning enema, relieve the constipation or above the or empty bowel. Well based enema or well retention, softening the heart stool or softening heart stool of impact, medication enema. Uh, medicating enema, it means the medication. Also, return flow of enema, remove the platus. So when we put or give the enema, always we have to keep some note. So when we give the enema, I said always warm enema solution is better. Patient position on left side with the right leg flex. And flex board asks a question, when you need to put the enema to the patient, what should be the position of the patient? It's called left side with right leg flex. And this is called Sims position. Also, when we give the enema, better to use the lubricant, right? Also, we have to, when we put the enema, insert the tip of enema, seven to 10 centimeter or three to four inches. During the putting the enema, if patient has cramping, slow the flow by lowering the back. And now go for some of the solution used as a cleaning enema, like tap water, normal saline, or hypertonic sodium, or well solution we used. And here, one of the questions we left, we, when you have time, you can read it. Now, some contraindication. So what condition we do not give the enema, right? What are the condition we, have, we do not give, I said? Basically, if patient has any kind of rectal bleeding, rectal fissure or rectal cancer, we do not give enema. If patient has an ulcerative colitis, GIT disease or corn disease, we do not give enema. If patient has a severe bleeding tendency because of hemorrhoid, we do not allow them for enema, especially the anus, through the anus. Or after rectal surgery, we do not, or potential for excessive bleeding, if any bleeding disorder, or certain heart condition also not allow to give the rectal enema. This is called contraindication of the enema. And what are the contra uh, complication of enema? What are the complications of enema? I said one of called fluid or electrolyte issue or vagal response. Vagal response means there's a 10th cranial nerve, it's called vagal nerve. Because when you put the enema and 10th cranial nerve is stimulated, and this is called vagal response. Even in very severe cases, bowel perforate, very uncommon, or perforation of the intestinal wall because of hemorrhoid or infection. So I said the 10th cranial nerve is called vagus nerve. And what are the response symptoms if vagal nerve stimulated? Sometimes patients complain of chest pain or feeling happiness or shortness of breath, dizziness, 
feeling faint or nausea. Patient feel pallor, pulse rate under 60 beat per minute. Bradycardia, bradypnea. This is called vagal stimuli. And now intervention for the patient if they complain of vagal response, right? First of all, we have to stop the putting the enema, remove the tube from the rectum and also place the patient in a supine posture. So when we put the bag or enema, we have to take care of the ostomy or channel. But whatever it is, if the patient has a complaint of vagal response, we have to place the patient as a supine. Supine posture means lie down on the back. Prone posture means lie on abdomen. Assess the pulse rate, assess the skin color, and also check the patient is a diaphoric or not. Diaphoric means sweating. Also, if we see any sign symptom of vagal response, at the same time, we have to contact with the healthcare provider. And what intervention? If the pulse rate is less than 60 beat per minute, place the patient in a shock position means Tandelberg posture. Tandelberg posture means head is down and feet is elevated. What does it mean on why we do this? To increase the blood flow to the brain. Tandelberg. Assess the blood pressure, right? Also apply the oxygen. Put the oxymetry, check the oxygen level, give oxygen. Also, physician may order atropine. So, teach how to prevent constipation. As I told you, we have to tell you, you should tell your patient increase the fluid intake two to three liters per day, increase the fiber intake. 25 to 30 gram per day, increase the activities, which stimulate the peristalsis and do not use laxative long-term, which can cause chronic constipation, right? And next here, also we have to teach importance of the habit that support the regularities, such as cup of coffee each morning or fiber for breakfast, eating regular times. Medication that cause the patient take that can affect the bowel function. It is, you have to find it out what medication they're taking. Maybe one or two medication can cause the constipation. Also the danger of routine, enema, and laxative, you have to know. You have to educate your patient. Also process the sugar slowing peristalsis, right? And now go next here, ostomy care. So sometimes some of the patient has to changing an ostomy apply, uh, apply applicants, we have to take care of the ostomy, right? So including the treating the patient with dignity, collect the subjectives and objective data. So what are the signs and symptoms? We have to write it down. Also application of the appliance, also including irritation or teaching including all of this, we have to talk about the ostomy care, right? So I said that when we go for ostomy care, we have 
to remove the pouch, impact the stoma, should be red or pink or moist. Also skin should be intact or not. Clean the skin with the soap and water. So, so ostomy care, when you take the care of the ostomy, like here, this is the ostomy. So always we have to remove the pouch and impact the stoma. This is called stoma. We have to check it. It should be the pink or red and moist, right? So, and also we have to check the surrounding skin and should, skin should be intact. And also clean the skin with the soap and water. And flex board ask this question. How we have to clean it? Just simple water and soap and dry it thoroughly and do not use any kind of moisture or powder. And also cut the opening of the skin barrier, usually one by eight inches longer than the stroma. And always apply the skin barrier and pouch and using the barrier test as needed for scissors. So this is the basic information we have to know for ostomy care. And now go here. Whatever we did, always we have to keep documentation, right? So documentation every shape, whether the patient did or did not have any bowel movement, we have to keep the record. Documentation describe the characteristics of the stool, frequency, the size, color, any offensive order, right? So uh, that's it up to here, the 